Hello. What I would like for us to investigate now is uh, thinking about Newton's first law and Newton's third law and how they give two very, very different ways of knowing uh, under certain circumstances that two forces are the same amount. And I just want us to think through situations where one applies or the other applies. So let's take a look at this situation. Um, you are home babysitting your younger sibling, um, and you're going to give them a piggyback ride. We're going to keep this as simple as possible. Um, so let's imagine that in the moment that we're investigating, you're just standing still. Your sibling is sitting still on top of your shoulders. And so we're going to make an interaction diagram for that scenario. We'll make a free body diagram for you. We'll make a free body diagram for your sibling. And we're going to calculate every force on both of those diagrams. So then we're going to think through how does Newton's first law help me figure out these numbers? How does Newton's third law help me figure out these numbers? And the masses of both you and your sibling are given. And I'm going to go work on the board to solve this. So to begin, uh, I'm going to make my interaction diagram. So let's see. If you are standing with your sibling sitting on your shoulders, um, then We'll have a sibling, we'll have you, you're standing on the floor, there's earth, there's nothing else that anybody's in contact with, so no other contact forces to worry about as far as long range forces. We've got the interaction between earth, that gravitational interaction. Um, no electric or magnetic interactions for us to be worried about right now. So I think we're done identifying objects. Um, there is a force between your sibling and you as your sibling sits on your shoulders. Um, I don't know that I want to call that a normal force because it's not really like there's not like a clear surface there. So I'm just going to call that a push. Um, I would say that there's a normal force between you and the floor. Uh, there's a gravitational force between the Earth and your sibling. And there's a gravitational force between you and the Earth. There's also a gravitational interaction between the Earth and the floor, and then the floor is being supported by the structure of the building and so on. But let's not worry about that stuff right now. So here is enough for an interaction diagram, and I'm going to think about identifying a system of my sibling, your sibling, and I'm going to think about an, a system of you. I'm doing these in two different colors. I'm going to color code my three body diagrams also. So let's start with the sibling. That one's a little bit simpler. So if I make a free body diagram for the sibling, I've got two forces here. There is an upwards force from the push from your shoulders. So I'm going to say a push by you on sibling. And there is also going to be, so I've got that push, and there's a gravitational force on your sibling. Now, I'm going to guess that by now, we're probably in a position where we can recognize pretty well that these forces are going to be equal amounts. This downwards force is the gravitational force by the Earth on your sibling. Now, let's think then about why are these forces balanced? This downwards gravitational force and this upwards push from your shoulders these are balanced. We know that they have to be balanced because these are the only forces acting on your sibling. And we know that your sibling is stationary. Your sibling is not moving, continuing to not move. So your sibling's velocity is not changing. And we know that when velocity is not changing, forces are balanced. So we know that these two forces are equal because the forces are balanced. This is what Newton's first law is all about. Because your sibling's velocity is not changing, those forces must be balanced. All of the forces on your sibling must be balanced. Since there are just two of them, then they have to be equal amounts. 
Also, I know both of these amounts now because I know the gravitational force on the sibling. We know that the sibling has a mass of 15 kilograms. And you know what? Um, I worked out this math uh, using 20 kilograms. So I'm going to game time decision to change that to 20 kilograms. Sorry. So a 20 kilogram sibling, we know from our previous experiment that the Earth pulls with 9.8 newtons of force on each kilogram of mass. So if your sibling has 20 kilograms of mass, 9.8 newtons for each kilogram times 20 kilograms, then we know that that force is 196 newtons of gravitational force. Now, since we know that this gravitational force and that push have to be balanced, then we also know that that push has to be 196 newtons. And so here we've used Newton's first law to establish that this amount and this amount are the same as each other. Now let's make the free body diagram for you. This one's going to have to have three forces on it. Uh, there is a normal force by the floor on you, there's a gravitational force by the earth on you, and there is a push down on your shoulders from your sibling. So three forces, your mass is 70 kilograms. So I'm going to use blue for, like I made a green free body diagram for the green circle I made on the interaction diagram. I'm going to make a blue free body diagram for you. So forces on you, we have a downwards gravitational force. Now you have a lot more mass than your sibling does, so I should make a much longer arrow than that first one that I made for your sibling. So this might not end up to scale, but at least I'll make a bigger gravitational force here. Gravitational force by Earth on you. And I know that that one, 9.8 newtons for each kilogram times, oops, not 20, but 70 kilograms, that gives me 686 newtons. So there are 686 newtons of the gravitational force pulling down on you. The other two forces, I've got a push by, my, by your sibling down and the normal force from the floor up. Now, that push from your sibling is down. And that push by sibling on you, what's a B? I know that amount because I know this interaction here this push between the sibling and you, we already worked out that that push by you on sibling is 196 newtons. And this is where Newton's third law comes into play. You and your sibling push each other, just like we saw the spring scales pulled each other equally, just like we saw the carts with the bumpers pushed each other equally. You and your sibling push each other equally. This is where Newton's third law factors in, this is one interaction. So if it's 196 newtons pushing on your sibling, it's also 196 newtons pushing on you. So this force is the same as this force. So that one has to be 196 newtons. That's what Newton's third law tells us. Now, if I've got two downwards forces, 196 newtons down and 686, new and 686 newtons up, now there's one last force. There's a normal force on you, and I know also for you the forces have to be balanced. So this force on you has to be a big one, actually, to make that to scale better. I need to make this arrow longer. And now it's really cutting into my 
interaction diagram, but that's okay. And here I'll mark that that's a different amount. That's a different amount. So this force, normal by floor on U, that force has to balance both the 196 Newton push down on your shoulders and the gravitational force by the Earth on you. And so that normal force has to be the total of 196 Newtons plus 686 Newtons, which gives me 882 Newtons. I know that the forces are balanced, so this one upward zero has to equal the total of those two downwards arrows. And this is another situation where making a vector addition diagram might help some people, where if I draw one arrow down and then I start my next arrow from the tip of that one, and then my third arrow, I'll make that in a different color. My third arrow then comes back up to zero. Then I know if this one was 686, this one was 196, then the length of the blue arrow has to equal the total of those two, which again is 882. Another way that we could think about that actually, if we wanted to, we could think about a system of you and your sibling, and we could think about a gravitational force on all 90 kilograms. And if we did a uh, gravitational force on 90 kilograms, we would get 882 newtons, which would be balanced by that normal force from the floor is another way we could work that out. But right now, I just want to keep a focus on the idea that I knew that this force, the push by you on your sibling, was 196 newtons because Newton's first law says these forces have to be balanced since the velocity is not changing. Newton's third law tells us that this force on one diagram is equal to that force on the other diagram. Sibling on U is equal amount to U on sibling. And something really important about Newton's third law is that this force is acting on two different objects. So one force of this pair of numbers that are equal is acting on sibling, the other is acting on U. With Newton's third law, those equal amounts of force are always on two different free body diagrams. Two different free body diagrams because they're acting on different objects, sibling and U. Whereas with Newton's first law, we know that forces on the same object have to be equal because the forces are balanced. I hope that was helpful.